Today we're going to look inside the Netscaler MPX 10500. This is the 10 gig version. It's got two 10 gig ports, SPF Plus and eight 1 gig SPF Plus or SPF. According sorry. to Citrix, there are two variations of the MPX 10500. The 9700, the 12500, and the 15000 all share the same hardware. You can get it with, I guess it's eight 1 gig SFP ports and eight Ethernet ports, or the flavor that I have, which is 10, well, sorry, two 10 gig SPF SFP plus ports and eight 1 gig SFP ports. Those appear to be the, the two variants. I've already rem removed the front panel to expose the video. It comes with two network ports and a COM port. And of course, it's the, the, the standard display. It is a 2U case. It's big, so it's, it's, it's you know, 1U is the MPX 5500 and the 7500. And this is really the first generation of the new Encore type net scalers. This is again the 1050, 10,500. For case size comparison, it's a, it's a little bit longer than the 5500 and 7500 uses a case like this. This is a much longer, well not much longer, it's a little bit longer case. Secured down by two screws on either side and no screws in the back. The case is removed by removing those four screws and you can slide it to the back, to the rear. And it should pop like that. Inside the 10,400, oh, sorry, 10,500, what can you expect? It is a dual quad core system using dual quad core Xeons. The MPX 12500 is the same, 5440, that's dual quad core, 8 cores, 8 threads. Comes with 16, I think 16 gigs of RAM, 4 times 4 modules. It comes with two crypto boards here with the blue tap caps. And of course on the other side are the network ports, the two 10 gigs are on top, and the two 1 gig 4 ports are on the bottom. Plenty of cooling, dual power supply, dual hot swappable, removable power supplies, 450 watts each. They look like this. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> so they're pretty, you know, the standard ones. They're the same ones that work in the 5500, sorry, the 7500. The 5500 has a dedicated... 250 watt power supply, whereas the 7500 has the dual removables. Um, it's also the same on, I think the 11,000 series, but I could be wrong. Let's pull back some of these airflow baffles. Oh, of course, in the corner you've got the flash reader for the. This is the you know the the Netscaler operating system would boot off of a compact flash. Below that is it's a single. This is a two and a half inch drive bay, SATA. And this didn't come with any drives. And the power supplies are bad. And some probably 80 millimeter cooling fans. They're, this is a pretty loud system. It uses the same motherboard as the 5500 and the 7500. What else can I tell you? It's the same motherboard, different firmware. And what is it? One, two, three, four. Four fans pulling air through the system from front to back. What is it good for? Well, certainly is good as a, you know, using running virtual, running it as a virtual server. 
So running a Zen server or VMware ESXi definitely has potential. There's certainly room back here where you could add additional drives. It has six SATA ports. It's right here. You could, it's, you know, Velcro in some drives. Certainly could work. And they're really cheap right now. Um, they, they're essentially end of life in them pretty soon. If anybody has gotten the crypto boards to work in other capacities, let me know. They do show up in Windows 2012, but there's no drivers for them. And the idea would be, it would be great to be able to re reutilize them or repurpose them in a Windows server or, a, or even a Linux server to offload SSL encryption from the server, from a web server. Now, I have been told that if you run ESX on this, they will show up. And if you run the Netscaler VPX on VMware ESX, you can actually assign these cores bypass to the, v to the virtual machine. I have not tested it yet. I'm going to try to do that in an upcoming video where I like to test that because if that's the case, then essentially this MPX, which cannot be upgraded to SDX because it does not have the virtual IO or VT-D, the processor does not support VT-D, so it can't cannot be upgraded to SDX, unfortunately. Um, but the this one, actually, I paid, I think, $250 for on eBay, but it was supposed to be $11,500, the next generation newer than this. That was supposed to have, I believe, uh, yeah, dual six cores, so 12 cores, 24 threads, and I was really anticipating that, but they sent me the wrong box with bad power supplies, and as a result, I didn't pay anything for it, except for shipping to Poland, which was, I think, uh, $59. So I'm going to utilize this as a server or something else. I Luckily, I have some power supplies that I can pop in here. And it's a pretty, pretty powerful box. 